Hello, welcome to the TV Music Network podcast with Phyllis and Belinda. I'm Phyllis. And I'm Belinda. Hey, and today we are talking about The Voice. Now, season 16 has come to a close. We rounded it out and it was the last week of shows. This Monday and Tuesday's performance show and the finale. They call it part one and part two. And it was a lot of fun. And ultimately, our one, the person that we are rooting for, ended up being victorious, which was Malin, who was on Team John. So, Melinda, why don't you talk a little bit about it? All right. Well, let's start with Monday's performance show. We were there both nights live. Yep. Check everything out. Monday, they had each contestant perform. Right. Three times. They sang an original song. They sang an original cover. And they sang a duet with their coach. And we should mention that Blake's had three people on his team. He had Geis, Andrew, and Dexter. All three, which I feel they kind of sound the same. They were really the same artist in a sense. So maybe they canceled each other out. And then John had Malin, who has an incredible voice the voice of an angel who i think or i hope will do really well in the music business yeah well they basically started off with the um they kind of changed they started the order off for the first round it started with maitland and she sang her original single right wait for you which i like the song but it was a i wasn't expecting that kind of song from her it sounded like um Florence and the Machine a little bit to me. Yeah, tell me about me Florence yeah. Machine, which Florence the Machine gets hit records. I I, I liked the song. I, I did too. Surprised right. When I heard it, it was her song, because, but I think that was probably the part of the strategy because you're hearing her sing a lot of ballads. Right. Not well, that many up up a tempo song. Well, that's true. Sing a song that's more up tempo. It's kind of a rock. It can hit a rock chart. Right. It At the like winners' the press conference, that was your question to Malin and John about why they picked that song, and they were both saying that it was a little different from her. It had an up tempo. Um, so I agree with that. Yeah, she said she liked the song. Um, she was really attached to the writer. Two songs that was written well, it was a girl Haley who was written to yeah, yeah Haley Warner or something. Both writers of both. She had a choice of like five songs. Right. And two of the songs had this Haley woman was one of the co-writers on. And she really liked us. It's one of these two. Like, she really liked her style. She really liked whatever. And she also said that she got to record it with the writers of the song. They right. The studio and was playing it. So she really got a feel for it. Which I think was great. She picked that one out. And John had to prove it. And he heard it. And he thought it was different for her. And that was why they went with that song. Right. And that was great. Well. Uh-huh. I think so, too. It played well. It gave her some good... Um, places to you know show her range, she right? Has a very wide range. That's what they want to do. A lot of times people, yeah, have, she can sing anything pretty much. Like it seems high like range. They usually um, do it five thousand times in a song. Right. The thing I liked about what, she didn't have to do it. Well, John did it. And she get the high note, but they would just do a smooth ballad, you know, right? Smooth, be upbeat song, upbeat song, and then one part she hit a note and come down. Not this. Oh, I mean, she right. Was, oh, she can high C. So let's high C. Yeah. Every oh my God. Time, she she was so good. A lot of artists do that, you know, and you hit the big notes, you know, but um, it was a good performance. I liked it a lot. All the judges were on their feet. Uh, well, Kelly, John, Adam were on their feet. Um, Kelly and really, Adam, yeah, was, was he on his feet? Adam. They were on their feet. Yeah. Their okay. Feet. I'm sorry. Well, good for feet. Adam. Yeah. Everyone loved it. And then Adam said everyone that was fantastic. And he went straight up to pub. Baby. Right. That she should win. Has he goes nothing to do with the coaches. He loves to pick on Blake, but he thought she was incredible. Right. And then John said he loved the song; it was a perfect song choice, and it was just flawless. And it, it was it was really good. It was. It was a great moment great for her. Performance for her. And the song was doing well on the charts. Still. Yeah, still. They're still on the top five of the chart. Go girl. Pretty good, because usually once the show's over, they forget you. That song is gone within a day or two, so it's still doing good. So that's that's a good sign. Uh, then it was Adam and Blake. Adam and Blake. Andrew and Blake. Oh, Andrew. Do it. No, Adam, Adam was sitting down. He didn't have anything to do. But <laughs> much down. to do, much to say. Um, Andrew and Blake. Yeah. A duo, which the coach is a duo. And they did All Right Now by Free. It's like they knew. Wait, all right yes. now, yes. baby, yes, it's a all. Okay, they knew it was a popular song. It could go country. It could go regular. It could go straight. It's Southern rock. It could be pop. Everybody's heard the song. I think that's why they picked it. It's a rock song. And yes. It couldn't have been, <laughs> it couldn't have been <laughs> 
thing. It's a rock it. song that can because go country. It didn't sound good. I mean, okay. You're talking about Paul Rogers vocals, and you're talking about which I mean, it's just I don't know. I thought it was it was an homage to the song. Stand there with their guitars. Oh, what were they gonna do? Are they gonna sit with their guitars? Stand with them? Okay, and they have no guitars. Okay. Have you ever seen them, them without now. a guitar? If you're gonna be singing the song. Get a rock guitar or be done. That's just my opinion on it. I thought it sounded good. It was not my. I mean, I recognize the song. I, I was just happy they picked a song I knew. Yeah, that's I, basically I, what I, I was thinking. I, probably that's why I praised it. However, Andrew did sound decent on his vocals. He gave him a little chance to shine. Yeah. He did a thing too. I just was like, really, Blake? But sometimes... I'll give him a point for not picking a country song. Right. I'll give him a point because if we pick all these country songs... There's way like, too much country in that night, he, too. He, he, and he probably knew that. He's probably been like, oh, all the right. singing country songs. We got six country songs. I mean, we got, you know... 25,000 country songs coming. And there's 12, there's nine songs in my, for my team. Let me pick something different. Yeah. And it just was like, okay. It was the Blake night, though. But I will give Blake, I will give Blake a little credit for, for um, trying to diversify. He's afraid. Yeah. Okay. And then Andrew, what did you think about his performance? I mean, it was like, okay. Right? For all right now? Yeah. I just said he sounded decent. Yeah. So you said decent. Decent no, doesn't think, decent mean okay? Okay. Well I okay. I already cried about Andrew. I said he it gave him a little chance to shine. He, okay. he sounded good in the vocals. I just didn't like the song choice and them singing up there with the guitar. Well actually, actually Andrew, Okay, see yeah. I like the song choice. Blake had his But I was indifferent to the vocal and the performance and then you told me that that performance didn't even count. No, it does not count for votes. And so they then, do that because well they have to do that because People are voting for their favorite coach. Okay. Do that at the finale. Well, here's my question. So when somebody said, oh, I like Andrew, they put in Andrew's vote. How do they know that he didn't get a, an extra vote because of Blake and that song? Well, you got to follow the rules. What you rules? Gotta, you got to look at the rules that change every week on the show. Oh, my God. I think they, they change. I think Carson didn't mention it, that it didn't count. But you would know that. I'm sure that's happened a lot when somebody voted for that person and they had no clue, didn't vote. But then again... You're voting for that person. I don't see no, how. No, sorry, it it just it doesn't matter in that sense. Sorry, when you vote, you vote for the person you like when you vote. That's what I'm but saying. Then if you steam the <coughs> iTunes, Excuse it me. does not count. Oh, not, gotcha. Not okay. You steam the Apple Music. Got it. Okay, I understand now. Music. That makes sense. You have to steam the Apple. There must have this new deal with Apple Music. So I'm so these iTunes. Don't I don't count. know. I say I keep iTunes. That. The contestants were voting and telling people. Right. Um, this week, John mentioned it. Um, that's right. what I was very surprised too. Malin last week, I know she was sick last week, and she mm. tweeted for you to, you know, you could stream her, just songs stream her songs, right? And everything else, and this week she didn't tweet at all. I was very surprised. That she on Instagram. I didn't see it. On Maybe Twitter. she knew she was going to win. No, it was just very surprising because most people call, you know, thanks guys, vote for me, and you know, she thanked John. It was kind of weird. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. She didn't. Maybe she was tired and she missed some. She just missed something. Maybe she's on Instagram. I have to look. She could have been on Instagram and I just didn't look and I didn't see that. Yeah. Okay. So continuing on with the Blake show. All right. So yeah, it felt that way too. That's yeah, too. a lot of Blake. Coach with three people in the finale, you're gonna see a lot of that coach because they perform with each person. Yeah, I think because it was just the two of them. Um, by the two of them, I mean John and by Blake. That it was. It felt like a one genre show. Yeah. Rather than a more rounded finale the way they usually are. Yeah. All right. So then Dexter was next. And they did the. And then Carson does an interview with the coach and the contestant. Every right. Year. Oh, that's you true. You really learn that much from them. And you learn nothing. You learn nothing. It's just kind of like, okay. Nothing well, you don't already know. Yeah. But, but yeah, I was interested to watch him. Uh, Dexter just said how he has a, he's overwhelmed. You know, he was he was Blake's only four to return this year. And, right. Um, the season. And Dexter did he good. He was blown away about the whole three doors down. He wanted to show America he could see more than country. Right. He wants to sell it. Although arena. three doors down is from Mississippi. I don't know yeah. how much more country you can get. No, but I guess he was trying Are to, they from there? Yeah, they, they're from Mississippi. It's a rock song or Alabama. I think it's Mississippi. They're not from Dexter's Alabama. It must be Mississippi. Maybe. I don't they know. They wanted to show that he wanted to show. And that's a rock song. It, True. It's a rock song. I, I think it was remade into a country song once, but it is. It was released as a rock song. Right. So he wanted to show he could he could 
he could do more. He I could think. do something besides and country, right? Very smart move because in a world of country, all these country guys, and he had to get himself into the finale. He had to send out I some kind of way. That helped him. Good for him. So he decides he started with his cover. He did anything goes. He said he wanted to do um, Randy Hauser as the artist. He wanted to do that song because he opened up his audition with Randy. He wanted to end with Randy. Yeah, and again, so I don't he, know. I wasn't familiar with the song at all, but it why sounded he good. It. Uh, unless you're a Randy Hauser fan, you're not going to be that familiar with the song. I think, in my opinion, on it. Not clear who even um, Randy Hauser is, but sure. Okay, that's fine. Yes, you're not a country music fan. No, I didn't say that. I just okay. didn't. I'm not familiar with Randy Hauser. That's all I said. Okay. And so he did his uh, performance. It was a good song choice for him. Yeah, it was. To me, a lot of show is great. And it sounded like it could have been uh, yeah. like an original song. Yeah. I thought the demo's going to love it. That's good. Yeah. Uh, right. He was bringing his A game on it. They had the violins, the keyboards. Um, all the coaches stood up. It was like, yeah. Um, Kelly said it was her favorite song and how she sounded very contemporary. And, um, yeah, Blake said he has the whole package for a song for him. Blake even called him the next George Strait. Yeah. Like, I had to ask Dexter about because I was like, huh? The next George Strait? Really? You're Daddy? like, who's George Strait? Are we thinking George Strait? You're right. The George the Strait? The George Strait? <laughs> who, every time I go to Vegas, is playing at the <laughs> mobile arena. I'm like, Last time yeah, I was there, he was performing. And that's the last time I was there. He was that's performing. some straight up country power. And finally, and then I it looked like he was playing like a whole entire hotel. month. And someone goes, "Oh no, he's back and came back." And I'm like, "So he was doing a residency there." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good for him. It was really weird that I went to Vegas, and every time I went, he was performing. You know, I have a question. And sold out and people packed and everything. Right. Else. What's your question? Okay, I have a question about the performances, and this is just something that I noticed and I want to know if you had noticed the same thing or even thought about it. Okay. The performances on the voice, the especially in the last couple of weeks, the big huge production numbers, the twenty five sing you know, twenty five background dancers that are dancing doing performances. The yeah, the big production and stuff. Do you think it's like a little overproduced? I don't know because it seems really it's beautiful. It looks really well. Those production numbers are, are so nice. But then I feel like I lose the artist a little bit in those big production numbers. Okay. I see what you're saying. I think they're just trying to make it like an award winning yeah. award performance so they can use that. I'm trying to make it look make different. It out, make it look oh, different. to get another show, Emmy. And to get Emmy consideration. I think they really go all out where on other shows you just kind of see them there right. in the background. Well, so. is it the, like the duet one they did? Did you see that one? Was that this week or last week? Or there was a, a duet with guys and Dexter when they looked like they were in a studio. Oh, that was the week before. Oh, week before. Okay, I'm when sorry. They, when they were doing when they were doing the Beatles stuff. Like yeah. Okay. So I'm. That's one of my examples. I it was a really great number. It was great, yeah. fantastic. I loved it, but I felt like it was in the studio. But you kind of lost them because they were in the back yeah. for the longest time before they walked up. But I feel that way about almost every performance they did. I think they do that all the time at finale. Huh. They the only one, the like Malin. Towards the end, mm -hmm. they do it all the time. Maybe maybe they're playing it for TV and not so much for in-studio or for the or for the one-on-one -on -one audience. To watch and go, wow, that production. Yeah. Standing on this. But it's like, that. whoa, look at this production. Not so much that artist. Mm, okay. I don't know. That's it the way it felt to me. It depends on the artist, too. I noticed it in the last couple of weeks. It depends on the artist. If you didn't care that much for Guy and Dexter, and then they're singing behind the studio, you are going to start watching right. stuff. Checking your watch. And they're doing stuff too. If you like Garf and Dexter, you might be like, oh my God, this is fantastic. Yeah. Backy. It all depends on your preference. Okay. I don't know. It just like didn't seem artist focused. It seemed more production number focused and whatever. I think they do it towards the end because the, the longer. I think another thing too. When you're dealing with 12, 13 artists, you really can't do all this stuff. Yeah. What you get down to four or five. Oh, you can. Time, okay, that makes sense. That's just why they're doing it. Right. Excuse me. Okay. That makes uh, sense then. Yeah, so that was Dexter. And, um, okay, so that was Dexter. So Go for Dexter. Lord. Then there was um, Guy and Blake's duet. And they sang Take It Easy. Yeah, and I love that song by the Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you feel about and, uh, it? I just didn't like it either. I know, and I keep uh, saying this, but that is the first and only song that I ever learned on guitar. 
Yes. And I love that song. Yeah. It it held it holds a special place in my heart. You should have went and performed with them. Now I know about that. They had their guitars. I would have fit right in, I guess. Yep, they had their guitars. <laughs> and uh, another duet, standing in their mics. Yeah. Uh, Played acoustic guitar. And uh, let's talk about Guy for a second. Can we? Because, uh, dude. And take it easy. I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on, but I basically think his voice was shot. Like, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, long singing competition. Right, he didn't. It and it it's so it's a natural thing. I actually liked his original audition he did when he did tripped away. I like and, Johnny. Uh, it was the opening show and usually some Johnny and guys were the same person to me, and I liked Johnny better. And Johnny Johnny's gone. Johnny left. So all I was so all we had left was guys. I think there was a guy named Johnny this Johnny, season. I there was a guy know. named Johnny this season who looked like guys who reminded me of guys who I who I would have voted for over guys that's gone. So I guess it doesn't matter. Wait, Johnny? I think that was his name. His name was Johnny. Young guy? That no. Was on John's team? No, he had short guy's hair. Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy from Pennsylvania. That's the one I liked. Jimmy. Who's Johnny? Johnny was a long guy. Johnny? Guy no. That, that John Le the John Legend saved. Oh yeah, no. He was gone the next week. I apologize, Jimmy. I like Jimmy. Like Jimmy. Jimmy was the um, dad to the rocker guy the rock music. He sang all these Charlie Poof and pop songs. Never sang a rock <laughs> song. Maybe, maybe, maybe he plays a show. I love it. My dad raised me to be this, raised me to be that. Then you sing the complete opposite of what you said but you grew up again, on. I said I think he was thinking strategically. And, like, yeah, and he lost. Well, he did. Look, maybe he should. Maybe he should have busted because no one was singing rock. Yeah. Not anyway, just just sorry. Back to guys. That's the only person was singing nineties rock. He should have killed her. Got an eighties rock. Boom, boom. Anyway. Okay, so guys, what you gonna do? So I think his voice was shot. And yeah, he just sounded awful. He was, yeah, he I was off. Awful. It wasn't. Off. It wasn't on his best weeks. Yeah, he's had better weeks where at where times where he could have been the front runner. Yeah, I think his or, voice was damaged. Yeah, I don't know. But, but, and maybe when they picked the songs out, his voice was fine. That happens. You're yeah. Singer. You pick them out like 12 weeks ago. Great on Thursday, and then by the time Monday comes, you're practicing Thursday with the band all week, and then Monday comes, you can't sing like that. It just sounded really low. Yeah. Like he had some voice issues. I mean, at least the song was upbeat, and at least it was a good song, but they right. did not sound And Blake was there. Yeah, Blake didn't sound good either. I didn't think it sounded good. It just wasn't the right song. I you was think excited to hear the Eagles. Adam would have been better for that to song. the Eagles. Ain't it? Yeah, but he could have done a guest appearance and to play a little tambourine in the same background. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> um, and then Andrew came out. So at one point, and it, I think it's because it was three people, I was like, wow, another? Yeah, another person? Another Jeez. Another person? Okay, so, uh, so Andrew came out to sing his original song, and it was called Rural Route Raising. Huh? And uh, rural route, yeah, that's raising. right. Rural route raising, yeah, and yeah, rural route because that's every address down yeah. in Mississippi. Every address probably down where he is is always a rural route something, highway something, whatever. So yeah. that has to be the address that he was talking about, or an homage to his hometown. We don't know. He didn't write the song. <laughs> so we don't know. He didn't write the song, but. One of the writers of his song is um, Mira Morris's husband, who's a oh, great. country um, songwriter and artist. Good for him. So it was a, three or four people on the song, and he didn't write it, but he said that when I talked about the song on Monday night of the show, he said that it just really resonated with him. He just felt good. He, you know, it just was a good song for him. And he, it was just, it, he said, it just it kind of reminded him of himself. He liked it. He sounded good with it. See, I think he had the better night. Yeah. You know, Andrew, who was like... Ultimately, uh, he had... I think he had the better songs. Who right? was the, like, the fourth runner-up. Yeah. The person coming in off a save is always the hardest for that person to get past, you right. know, um, fourth place. He had the better song. You know, he had his cowboy hat on, his guitar. No, Lord, his hat. His hat. He was already, you know. Yeah. And, um, and you know what I liked about him? When he gets excited, his little excitement is contagious. And I kind of, I forget that he's a younger guy. Yeah. He's like 22, 23 or something like that. Yeah. So you can see how 
like he's at the start of his career or he's got to be discovered or something like that that's like really good someone called him Garth didn't they like he reminded him of Garth was that Blake or Kelly said it Garth. after one Garth Brooks Garth. <laughs> he's like Garth like Wayne and Garth no Garth I thought someone compared him to Garth Garth Brooks yes Garth okay. Brooks I missed that part I think so and okay. I could see the potential for him to have a career in country music that's true I can't see him having a career as big as Garth Brooks I mean I don't think not anybody true. can no but you not never know not happening it's not happening anyway with the way the charts are yeah that's true the way the charts are now yeah the way concerts no way performances are so Garth has nothing to worry about and I'm sure he's not sitting around worrying Mariah stop worrying yeah no stop it because you have nothing to worry about. about that's my main thing about her happening. But she's I worried. Get it. it ain't happening. Yeah, so uh, worried that Taylor's not going to catch up because the charts are made differently. So worried that some of it was allegedly that some of her fans were buying up her song to stop Despacito from taking over her spot at number I one. That. Do I you think that was true? I believe it. Wow. I believe it. That's so sad. They want to help our girl. If Despacito's climb on the chart and could beat the record, right? You know, it's like when these basketball players come out. I get so mad when I watch these basketball players, and they're like, they just t beat, you know, Will Chamberlain's record and so-and-so's record. Right. Yeah, because you changed the rules. And you right. So-and-so. So you should say, they now beat the record due to the rule change. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like, wait a minute. Come on. Yeah, you know? put the little asterisk by the name. Come on. And when they start saying these other players are better than Michael Jordan, it's like, <laughs> I know. That, it makes me laugh. Be, it's a little bit biased. I laugh. But you gotta keep it real. People. Yeah, keep it real. You gotta keep it yeah, real. all you have to say is Stop changing the Kobe, whoever is the Michael Jordan of his generation or of his day. You say it that way, and you're and you're covered. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. But yeah. what do I know anyway? But I, but I do know Andrew is not the next Garth Brooks. <laughs> that I do know. <laughs> nice guy. Okay, really, like really him. Nice yeah, guy. he's so I nice. Like him. He's like well, he's like one of the nice guys. One of the guys you're gonna see. Later on, he's going to come to L.A. Yeah. He's going to be playing at the country jamboree that they that they do at the pool. Stagecoach. Once a, we're not going to stagecoach. We're not going to. Oh, yeah, we're not going. We're not going to the country club. jamboree either. Come on. Country let's jamboree. let's be real. He's going to be playing at 3 o'clock because they play all afternoon from right. one side. And we're going to be there. That's why I said stagecoach. We're passing through and we're going to stop by. The, hey, and oh, my God. How are Guys. Yeah, remember us? Nice oh my guy. god, I remember you. And being nice goes a long way, and he's a nice guy, and I think he right. can go a long way being nice. Right. He sounds good. Good for he's him. He's in his lane. He's doing his thing. As long as he does his country thing, it's gonna be fine. Right. And as long as Blake and people and down in Nashville right. keep opening bars, off your set list, <laughs> everything's gonna be fine. You can go see rural <laughs> racing. Rebel. R rural route Blake, raising. You've seen it all your life, as and, and, and Blake told that. Yeah. I hope you like the song. You're gonna be seeing it the rest of your life. I'll say, I love Thank how, you, Blake. I love how Blake, how Blake obvious he is. He feel good. He, he does. Makes his team like there is a place for you in country music. That I'm gonna help. Help you, you get there. It. Yeah. It's really, really good. And it, and it has um. Well, we Let's come back one day, maybe, and, and see where they now break and do and see where team by team guys are. Yeah, we should and see what's happening and see because he, yeah, that's good for him. So, since we're gonna have a little bit of a break, we maybe can do that. Yeah. But anyway, so that was another one. He did his thing. I don't mean it with a garb comment, but, um, but there was Andrew. Good, go, good for Andrew. And then, but then here comes John Legend with Malin, and they sang a duet for Unforgettable. Oh yeah. Nat King yeah, Cole. Oh, that was at, before they did that. They did the top four teaming up with Chevelle to do a Toyota commercial. And I'm like, oh, here's right. the commercial. Here they are. They're in the commercial now. And I thought, please, I hope these people get some cars because there's another commercial. That was a really nice commercial. It was a cute commercial. Mm -hmm. So then they took John. And Chevelle still didn't drive. And um, maybe she doesn't have her license. That's what I was saying. Seat, I, I know, but. It, she was in the driver's seat of the car. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, but you, when you were under. Age, you were in the driver's seat of your parents' car all the time. I know, but this is a commercial. Or maybe for insurance purposes. Exactly. They may be like, um... We Don't know. start that engine. Yeah. Well, the other contestants didn't drive. They have never doubled up in cars. They drove. I know, but not everyone. 
you know, like guy was driving and someone was in the passenger seat. So yeah, no, but. Chevelle was in the driver's seat. I don't know why that bothers me so much. Because she's not old enough to drive or she doesn't drive. She is old enough. We don't know her status. No. What I'm saying we'll is. We'll look it up later if when, it's that important. No, no, no. She's the winner of The Voice. They had a commercial. They had to put her somewhere in the commercial. When they introduced her right after the season 16 premiere, there was an interview with her. And they were talking about a car. And I could have sworn she said she didn't have her driver's license yet. Because someone asked her about her car. Okay. Would it be better if had Dexter driving her in the car? Yes. Okay, so, all right. Well, they screwed up on that. I was just happy she was in the video, though, and was remembered and included. Well, she's won the show last December. She had time to probably get her permit or license since then. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, John and Maitland came out, <laughs> and they sang Unforgettable. Now, yes. We, they gave me the song choices. Uh, find out the song titles in advance because um, they announced them. And sometimes you can't find them. You can, there's ways you can find them. Unforgettable. Um, they I love that song. But I'm like, this is going to be great. This is going to be yep. fantastic. Nat King Cole. Natalie, we made it over. Yeah. Dad, that was cool. so beautiful. I thought it was going to be good. And Malin was killing the ab libs and a really nice vocal. Yeah, and the nice I runs. Great. Um, to me, it's a classic song. And I thought I was going to love it. And yeah. I did not love it. I it was it. overproduced. Had way too many runs in it. They were trying to, I don't know if they were trying to jazz it up more, not yeah. jazz it up more. I i don't know. I, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. And then the, the 45 violins, the the strings, the whole production oh, four, number. Four. Yeah. Yeah, they were holding the mic. Lose yeah. 10 musicians. You don't need that many people. I don't know. It was beautiful and it was great, but I thought it was overproduced. Okay. The recording. And the production number, the stage production number. Okay, and John said a, a story how he had tried out the local mall for Star Search. Yeah, and, and uh, Nat King Cole is one of his favorites or something, ain't it? Favorites and his voice. People say he sounds like. Do you think his voice sounds like Nat King Cole to you? No, I don't. I, never thought of that. I don't think. Everybody was saying that. No, you have to go back and listen to it. I don't think he sounds like Nat King Cole. I think he's probably compared, or people are mentioning it because he sings the same type of music, okay. or he can be recognized as the same type of music. It's like Michael Blue Blay, and when they say Frank Sinatra, or when they say whatever, he don't sound like Frank Sinatra. He just sings the kind of music that can be identified with Frank, Frank yeah. Sinatra. I think that's why they say that with John. Okay. I'll have to look it up and see. Yeah, I but think it until people start saying like oh, he mentioned yeah. something about Star Search. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Yeah, because we talked about how every all these people that became famous did not win on Star Search or didn't win in general. They did not win, and it's which proves you don't have to win in order to have a successful it's career. Almost to the point where you can put a clip up and you show all of them losing, and it's just it's every single yeah. person. And the winners, people that beat them, you've never heard from again. And it's like it's kind of that's a very good. That's no, a few that's, people you you hear from again, but not very many. Podcast. Well, you just think about like where know, are they now? Justin Timberlake lost. Yeah, Spears lost. lost. Aaliyah lost. Um. Destiny's Child. Yeah, lost, we lost uh, big. There's so many. It's kind of funny. When yeah. You, I shouldn't say funny, but it's kind of... It's ironic, I think. When you, when you see all the people, it's kind of like, let's match up the two. But right. even on the main star search and then the little star search. I mean, little star search. When star search came back, it was like... Baby Star they Search? brought it back. I don't know. Oh, about, Arsenio Hall was the host or something? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Star people. Search 2010. He, he lost, uh, I forget what's her name. Is. Star Search 3000? I don't know. Uh, and it was a whole bunch of them. Came I just out. remember the very first one. It was like Tracy Ross yeah. was in one of the supermodel categories and something. That's all I really remember about Sinbad, Rosie O'Donnell, ain't it? Are you trying to tell me? That you remember only I don't, certain things about Star Search. Yeah, only certain things. Without forgetting the best thing that came out of Star Search. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. You're just Sam tripping. Yes. Harris. I hadn't forgotten. Jesus. Well, from the opening note of Sam Harris. Till now. Over the rainbow with the long coat and he just belted. Yeah, he killed that song. Run, and he who, then got a bow tie. Who Shirley Ralph said that he there's a black woman in him somewhere. Yeah, a black woman in yeah, him. Yeah, somewhere in Sam. And then he put out this album, and I brought the album. Oh, God. 
I mentioned Ladies. Star Surge, which means Sam Harris is coming up, which means we're going to spend five minutes with Belinda talking about the glory that is Sam Harris. Yes. Just amazing. For those of you who don't know who Sam Harris is. Anytime you can bring up somebody from the anytime 80s. Anytime you can bring up someone from the 80s. You do it. You have to do it. And we got on the subject of Star Search. And all of a sudden you started to do Star Search. And I happened to think of Sam Harris. Came out in the 80s. Right. Can sing. His ass day. off. Can out sing any of you <laughs> to this day. <laughs> you young whippersnappers. He shows and be. And show you how it's done. Yeah. But they wouldn't have him because he wouldn't be commercial enough for them. But they should, he should be someone's coach. Yeah. Are you well, he did like a one man show. Adam, no, okay, not listening. Blink we know Adam ain't listening. Gwen, you're not listening. John Gwen might not listening. John might stumble upon Christy it because. Not listening. However, Dexter is probably listening. Hi, Dexter. Hey, Dexter. So you, when 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 you and Blake emails you and tells you how you're doing, let him know. That we say hi. Sam Harris. Tell me, said I, and need to have Sam Harris be a guest mentor on his show and send him a link of Sam Harris. Won't happen. There we go. Anyway. But it won't happen. It's nice to dream. It is nice to dream. You have any dream. A dream is a wish your heart makes. Who I go with Sam Harris right now? Even his filler sounded good. Okay, with Motown put Okay, that can album. we can we get back to Motown put that album out? I this, like really this podcast is sponsored you by the people for Sam Harris. Some of these songs on that album were dated, didn't sound good. Some of them. And all that. And I'm like, really Motown? Really, really, really Motown? But, but that was back in Motown that. was going through some like changes at the same time too. What could have been? He still sings today and does shows. And yes, he does. I'm there. Okay. So, what did you think of Unforgettable? It was great, right? You liked it, didn't like it, yeah, could be better. I liked it, didn't love it. I expected right. to love it, but I ended up liking it. Liked it, didn't love it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Go. And John didn't win on Star Search, and he's a superstar. <laughs> I don't know yeah, how. he's an he EGOT he winner. He make it to the producer rap. Yeah. So that should be something for you guys to know. But uh, he's a VGOT Scarf winner. Scarf made it to the producer round and was on the show called The Voice, and he was up next. You mean guys. Name. Shit. Who did I say? You Garth. said Garth. Garth. We can add that part, all right? Actually, we won't. Yeah, we won't. It'll be funny. Nobody will hear it. Guys, not Garth. <laughs> he made it. Oh, and he, who I want to say is he Blythe, made an interview and he made a talk about dreaming from a small town. Uh, yeah, Blythe there was something was about his interview town. just didn't his sit right. Did, okay, at the beginning they sounded good. Towards the end they just sounded kind of cocky. cocky. Yeah, and I don't like know he was a little he full of himself. Cocky because he's been playing shows. Okay, he was cocky he's because he's show. like between me <laughs> and Andrew and Dexter. I got this in the bag. Okay. He underestimated Malin. Yeah, he just That's what happened. I don't know. He's like, I'm gonna win I'm about to win this thing. Oh, and maybe That's exactly what I think it is. He thought he was gonna win. You think about you've been on T V for six, seven weeks and people are tweeting you and saying you're great But they're tweeting everybody else too. I know. I guess it could start going to your head now. A little bit. It would go to mine. Um, I guess it would. A teeny bit. Yeah, I guess I'd be thinking I think I'm about to win this. Let me see if I can find a place for my trophy. That's true. Yeah. I think what am I going to do when Warner Brothers comes calling and seeing if they want me to um sign up? Because I'm on my way to Nashville. Unless he lives there already. He's from, I think he's from Louisiana. Yeah, he is from Louisiana. But I thought he was going to be, I thought he lived in Nashville or was going to Nashville. That's the, who can get to Nashville first? That's the new, <laughs> that's the new game. <laughs> Who can get the? It's the amazing race to Nashville. Who can get the song right? Right. To write the song. Right. Who's gonna win? It will be Guy. Will it be Andrew? Will it be Dexter? And Guy's like, it's gonna, Lacey it's K. gonna K. be me. Oh, Lacey, yes. Lacey K. Booth. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. Well, a couple, we're talking about an American Idol finalist, Lacey K. Booth. But I, do you think she has a better chance than those three guys? Yep. You do. <laughs> you answered it so matter of factly. All right, I'm ready to write the song. Yeah, that's true. She's got big names behind her, which we'll talk about later. Right. Okay. Uh, but we'll see. So back to Garth. 
We'll see. Anyway, back to Guy. Not Garth. So Guy had top of the small town. Right. Blake said, oh, he hurt him. He was deep, desperate to get him to see if he could win. Right. He had to block, had to block John for him. He sure did. And all John like, got blocked by a lot of people. How his first counter was Blake. And then they talked about Lee Greenwood tweeting him. Right. Because he did. God bless the USA. Blake mentioned his song beyond the chart. And he even said to Blake, my song was on top of your song. And, and if it was yeah. Funny, I don't know what Blake's it. Blake's like, don't be trying to do my song. It didn't come across. It didn't come across as funny. It or sincere. Kind of cocky. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's not the impression. I hope it's not. I don't know. I hate to see what he's going to be thinking six months from now. He's going to be like Thor in um, the Avengers. All like, where's my stuff? Where did that thing go? Oh my God! So and so, so and so. Where's my record deal? Give away a spoiler for the Oh, did I give away a spoiler? No, it sounds like spoiler alert. That could have been a spoiler for the Avengers. You should probably stop. Oh my God! I apologize. If someone in this planet has not yet seen Avengers, that is happens to be watching this, listening to this podcast, which I doubt, then I apologize. You should have been there. You should have went. You should have. <laughs> You should have went before this podcast because you knew I might mention it. But anyway, that's my exact same feeling. But maybe they didn't get it. Anyway. Anyway. On top of that, I thought, he sings once in a blue moon. So Blake is saying, I'm surprised. We'll be surprised if he wins. Right. Um, Because Blake knows his audience. He knows that if it was just guys... And not Andrew and not Dexter in the finale and maybe some other person. Guys might have had a better shot of winning. But the song he sang was Earl Thomas Conley. Now, Earl Thomas Conley is a country artist back, right. back in the day. He recently passed away. I would say he was Blake. iconic. Really People love him. Blake. Blake was That was Blake's mentor. Blake was the one that actually announced that he died. It right. Across the, uh, the internet. People got it off of Blake's feed. And he sang his and Blake song. champion for the song, correct? And Blake, I guess, champion for it. Probably having to pick it. And Blake was just like, "Oh, Earl's family's so proud, right? Really, you know, happy about it. Everything else. He's missing his and friend. He sang, yeah, he's missing his friend. And they sang the song, and he was he sounded off key. Yeah, he looked nervous. Well, I I can good, understand him being I nervous. Voice, I think it. I think he's yeah. shot. I don't know. It was and, not a good week for him. And then the judges started making comments, and they were complimenting him everything but his singing. Well, yeah. He pulled out the Paula card. And That's what you do if you don't like the performance. You got to say something. And Kelly made a comment about he looks nice. It was a, it was oh Kelly said also my favorite song. Yeah, they did say everything about that, but then all of a sudden. Um, Blake just said, "Oh, the, the family's really proud of you and everything right. else." And I don't think Adam said anything. I don't think Adam really wanted to go tell him. But it was just very weird. So then right. Dexter comes. So it's like, well, here comes another person. And he sang his original. His original was called "Looking Back," I sh- which and I thought was, was a good song. A bunch of songwriters, including Kelly Pickler's husband. Oh, really? Um, That's Tom nice. Pickler. He's a country songwriter. Um, he's one of the writers on that song with the with the about three or four other people. Right. And uh, Blake liked the songs. It was in his wheelhouse. The recording session. Did any of them have a Shane McNally song? McNally song? How did that not happen? Yeah. That made no sense at all. I don't know. Yeah. Song land. Yeah, which is the new show that's How coming on. Now the voice is over. Nine. Actually, it's 40 number ones. He picked number one since we last. So we Good for him. him. The next week yeah, he had another number one. Ones. How did this guy have 40 number one country singles? Songland, which is which is executive produced the same Safety. yeah about Audrey Morrissey. It's coming on next week, right? Uh, premiering October. next week. That was a no-brainer. Yeah, and we actually attended the Songland like premiere party and Q and A with the um, coaches from that song, all award-winning songwriters, and we'll be talking about that on a future podcast ahead of the premiere. So that was a no-brainer. Did they pick yeah. them? guys didn't pick them. I don't know. It would have been like... Maybe there were choices for it. They didn't? No, Who there knows? Been, here's your five choices. All five would have been... <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's see. Which number one, potential number one do I want? Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. You would have had a choice of five songs and each one would have been written by Shane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shane yes, exactly. One of those guys... Right. If they picked, there would have been at least one in there, but I don't know. That's funny. That is interesting when you mention that. I don't know. Anyway, Dexter's song was not written by Shane, but it sounded good. Yeah, I liked it. 
good it, it fit good. him perfectly, I think. Yeah, Dexter had a, he had a good night. He yeah. Good. It wasn't his best, but Dexter I feel like was making very smart yeah. choices. Blake and Kelly was standing. Kelly said love Kelly said that he was their favorite country artist. Yeah. How authentic he was and Blake said he's hundred percent he's the most hundred percent ready to go. Yeah. He uh, is. Yeah, he said he could step in, be a superstar. Blake copied on his working ethics. And his personality said he's yeah. the, the nicest, the best. So he really, really sold on Dexter. Yeah. So what is that guy, Luke Holmes? Yeah. I think so, right? Luke Holmes? Luke Holmes, a country artist. What about him? Yeah, I think Dexter can be in his same vein, too. Well, well, Blake's got him under George Strait. <laughs> That's true. He's I didn't think George, George Strait. Strait but uh, yeah, go so, for it. Okay. But it felt... Okay. It just felt like we kept hearing the same song over and over again. Right. So That's what I'm saying. That song when Andrew and I think that ultimately hurt them. Yeah, that's what I thought so too. And then the producer of Songland came out and right. started talking about the song. And so it's Esther Dean, Ryan Tedder, Ryan Tedder, of course, and Shane. And Shane, they are the they are the are they judges, coaches? What are they're they? coaches. coaches. Okay. okay, I keep describing when I saw the trailers for the show. I haven't seen the um, premiere yet. Um, wow. Should be watching that in a few days. Yeah. I These likened it to. A shark shark tank meets a song thing. Like they, they go in front of these people, they talk to the song and the potential artist is there that's going to be buying the song. They they he play they play the song for them and they talk about it in general and kinda of work through it. All of them have a little like mentoring session about the song. Which seems to be nice. That's why I kind of remind you of Shark Tank yeah. because when you see Shark Tank they have the product and the sharks are discussing the potential sell the products and they're doing the same thing with the song and it seems like a very interesting show very interesting premise it's been done before but probably not in the way that songland is going to be doing it they're making it like it's never happened though. yeah and i'm like no it's happened before I've there have been songwriting thing. competition yeah. shows yeah but um we shall see you may not have watched it but it's happened yeah so anyway they came out to promote that to promote the show it's a long promo for it long promo uh, full of superstar potential hit makers and not so many like, and not so much of the people trying out pop it and, and try to shop those all to themselves like yeah and right right and make a trainer yeah it seems like it would have been nice to have, yeah, like, Eagle. let's meet the yeah. contestants. Let's meet the next Ryan Tedder. Let's yeah. meet the next so and so. Nice see one or two of them. Nothing. Not at all. It's um, all about the Jonas but, Brothers and Charlie Poos. But that's kind of how they need to sell it. But well, we'll see. But do they really need to sell it that way, though? No, they don't. They don't they know. Feel they, need to sell they feel they do, right? Anyway, well, the show premieres next week, and right. we will be seeing it. Probably tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be talking about we it. Will, we will be all ready to talk about it on Tuesday. And we may have a different impression after we watch the episode. Yeah, that's true. We don't know. I'm going by this three minutes I saw. We will see. But yeah. we did go to the party. So who performed next? Very nice party. Oh, and also, um, Dave Stewart. And yes! Adam oh, my God, Dave Stewart. Our executive producers. Okay, let's talk about Dave Stewart oh, of the yeah. Eurythmics. I'm so excited that he is going to be involved in the show it's one of his brainchilds one of his babies he's known audrey morrissey who executive produces the voice and this new upcoming songland from her mtv days where she did when she produced a lot of mtv music awards vmas you know they're live things talked about on some one day they're live acoustic things which is great so he's very excited that he's that he's involved in this and I don't know. I think it's just going to be great, just based on that. I'd love to and we shall see. Camera, but he's not going to be on camera. But anytime yeah, you can get Dave Stewart involved. And anytime I'll you can have you. a conversation with Dave Stewart, Stewart, which we did, yes, he is a plus. Fantastic. That he is from the '80s, but <laughs> yeah, we knew that was coming. Yeah, we are. Go ahead. I made an '80s reference earlier. Yeah, so you got to get another one in, and she'll get another one in before this podcast yeah. is over. So I'll keep it light. Dave yeah. Stewart for the win, the arithmetic. So yes. Okay, so then um, after the coaches came out, what? Who else did? Who else did we hear all the original songs? We talked about all of them. No, we did not. Okay, what other original Dexter songs? And Blake did "Hardworking Man." Uh huh. Yeah, they mentioned Blake. So this Sean took him back to high school. He told Dexter right. to took him back to the womb. It was kind of funny, and um, it was it was okay. Yeah. You know, again, okay. It sounded job. like the other two that came out before. Yeah, they did a good job. Yeah. And then Garth did his original single. Why do you keep saying Garth now? He's guys. 
<laughs> I've jinxed it for you. I apologize. You jinxed it. You know, he probably gets it a lot, and it probably worked in his favor. I don't know. You're going to read these plans somewhere. Well, he you, did tease yeah. about his name. I'm sure he gets all the time. I called him Blythe at one point. Well, that's what Blake said. He goes, I'm Blake, your guy for Blake. Yeah. Blake. yeah. And anyway. then he said one time somebody said he was Gwyneth. Yeah, so we called him Gwyneth. That was hilarious. That was hysterical. Yeah. Because Gwyneth, Glyph, well, you've been called Gwyneth. Um, oh, yes, I've been called Gwyneth. By Quentin Tarantino. Oh, my God, that's stop. That's another story. That is. Anyway. Um, that's actually right. a very interesting story. He did his original song. It's called Proof I Always Love You. And he actually co-wrote the song with a friend of his. Which is great. He said, oh, the song's in my back pocket for four years. Yeah. And he wrote it. I think that was another wife, reason why things went to his head, too. And, yeah. And he sang the song. And the song wasn't that bad. I liked it. The song wasn't that bad. When I first heard it, I was like, oh, you know, there's another song, another country song. Let me go, you know. No, I liked it. Get on, get the yeah, go get my sandwich. All this other kind of stuff. But it actually, you know, we were there. I was like, oh. And I actually was like, oh, my God. I turned right. around. I'm like, this actually sound, it sounded good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so Blake was like, and Blake made a mention, you're the only one that sang that, right. the song. Which Your own song. Kind of weird and not was like, did you really no, have to you, say that? No, or? you praise what you can. I mean, the others probably write songs. Yeah, I know, but they didn't do them. Yeah. I mean, did they, did they want to do one? They turned it down? If, I don't know. Anyway. If you can write your own songs, everybody deserves the credit for that because... It's hard. It's a hard job to write a song, I think. Closing out the show was the same person who opened the show was Malin. Because when Malin opened the show, first thing I thought, huh, three country artists and three people from Blake and she's opened the show. That makes no sense. And closing, yeah. They reversed the order out of nowhere the last round. And she ended up closing the show and she did Hallelujah. Nice. So they did the interview. Oh my God, it was they beautiful. About it, and they said that he was, he was John's first artist. She's now his last artist. And yep. talked about her performance. It only takes one. John said she's been been pitch perfect all season, maybe because of her, you know, hearing impairment. I don't know, but she she's been great. Know, but she sang Hallelujah. So when I first heard the song choice, she sang the heck out of that I song. I was like, oh, here we go again. Another Hallelujah, so yeah. So many times. But then it seems like it hadn't been done in recent and recent seasons. I looked it up to see how many voice performers that because it's been done on a lot of reality shows. Yeah. And I looked up when the voice. I was like, wait a minute. I was only like three or four. And know? that was the song I had guessed that was like the most covered song ever. And it hasn't been. It hasn't been. But she did. She sounded great. I yeah. Mean, she did it did a little bit I couldn't find one thing wrong with that song. The only thing that might have been wrong with it is that they did it last. And when they do it last, I mean, it's a big showstopper when you're at home. But when you're there at the show backstage, you're prepping because they're going to be coming back. You're Not going me. to get into position on your line. Not you're me. adjusting in general. So... And people were walking back and forth, so I got a little distracted. I did, because I went right to the front and sat down and was not moving until Malin sang her song. Oh, my God. And I did not move. Yes, And true. you see the contestants start coming. Right. And they come to the TV. The boys were already came over. Yeah. Because they have to bring them to the stage. They have to drive them in a you know, car. Right. The stage is, the yeah. It was very, very big. And I sat there until one person walked up and said, I hope she wins. I'm like, please be quiet. I tried <laughs> to watch the performance. Yeah. I sat here by myself. So I could watch it. I even left from. you alone. And um, I thought it was great. It was. And I've heard that song, like I said, performed a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I really, really like, there was a guy named Matthew who was on Teen Christy. I think it was season six that did not make the finale, which is, which is was another robbery. And um, and he sang that so great that I thought no one's gonna top it. And I, I don't remember like, it. I still prefer his version better. Mm -hmm. But she did such a good job. Oh, I have I to hear like, it. I hope she. You have to watch it. I'll, I'll, I'll see the clip. Yeah. You got to watch it. Um, I even told him when he came back last year. I thought they would do that neon dream. Oh yeah, thing. that now defunct neon dreams defunct that neon. they probably don't even want to talk about anymore. That I'm sure they don't want to talk about because they went over promoting it. And, he, and I said, oh, yeah, it was so mad. silly. So bad when you got. Off the show, and he laughed, and one day we had a good laugh about that. But anyway, um, I said she's got to win. Yeah, I, I don't know I, why they won't take that Neon Dreams or do something. Build a little booth at Universal Studios. Have the voice. I mean, don't they have it in Florida or Universal Studios in Florida or something? But build a little booth and make it the voice experience. We can go in there. Just put a red chair in there. Yeah, and make you spin around. And yeah, and you can sing, sing the little and song. Have them show up and yeah, and on a video. Out. Have them turn around for you or something on the little chair. Just make it interactive. Just do something. Put a city walk. Yeah. 
Yeah. Put in city walkers. You know, the city Having in city walkers. That would totally work oh, for me. Walks free. Everybody would stop by. I don't know. I feel like they should do. Like, Mom, it's the red chair. They should do something right more. And have everybody take a picture with that chair. Yep. And then they can do it in, inside Universal as well. That would be nice. That would be really good. I don't know why they don't do that. Because that Neon Dreams was a good idea. But why take it to Vegas? It was a good idea. Keep it on home. But they did that once before in Vegas. They had a show that was downtown. And they had members of different shows be on it. They had a girl from The Voice. And they had I don't know about that. And whatever. And it lasted a couple of weeks and it was gone. I think right. Was which is Vegas why you so just have a chair. I think they probably should have tried it here. Yeah, the at Universal or at City Walk. Again, the rumor is that, that it was there, but it was supposed to go to the Hard Rock, and that was before um, Branson brought everything out. Oh, uh, they, they um, the Hard Rock. Why doesn't Branson have the voice which, review? Which is gone now. <sighs> well, they moved it. It's a different location in Vegas, but the Hard Rock I'm used to going to right across. It's gone. No, oh, well. In fact, the last time I was there was well, not the last time. But, I don't know. They should listen to me. A couple times I was there. About a year ago or so, I was there. And one time I went, it was all boarded up. I couldn't get in. Right. To go by and see everything was there. Oh, the right. By, the Hard Rock Co- it was the a- Hard Rock Cafe. Yeah, they had a bo- cafe. That was right they in the same little up, lot as the Rock and Roll Hotel. And they had it boarded, but they had moved it all because right. they canceled the Neon Dream. So I went over and they had the thing at the... Okay, Poor Neon so Dreams. Try to go to the front and take some pictures. Right. And everything. And I thought. Because they had like a, a walk of fame there I too. I might have been arrested here. I know if I'm that well, if I go and try to take a picture of the Slaughter Star, they'll just think that we're trying to get Elton. They'll never think. Yeah. We made our way around and we got the pictures and we left. <laughs> and it was daytime. And yeah. Anyway, I still think they they could do more cross promotion you go by with the show and that i mean god just get a damn chair there yeah but i think i don't get it that was the reason why the show got canceled all right i don't think it was low ticket well there probably wasn't low yeah, maybe it was a combination of both well, i think he brought it was going through it like no no that's not happening that's oh well whatever. okay but, so you know, that, that was the finale anyway. so that was that was monday. part one so that was the monday show right so who do you think won the night Malin. I thought Malin won the night. Malin won the night. I feel like Dexter maybe was second, but it didn't really matter. Those guys, all, to me, they all canceled each other out. Malin stood out. Number one, she was the only girl. Number yeah. two, she has the best voice out of all of them. Number three, she had John so that John could kind of, you know, pop her. She was his only child, if I can put it that way. And Blake had all three of his kids in it, so he couldn't really, he had to have all three hats. Yeah. He couldn't really do a thing, and he would never do this, but he would never do an Adam and say, oh my God, I love you guys, but y'all should vote for guys. He would never do that. No, he, he didn't. Yeah, and he didn't. So I think it was fine. Then we get to Tuesday night. Yeah. The fun filled packed finale. With all these people, all these performers and stuff, and you said that it was all the exact same people from the Billboard Music Awards. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, on NBC, and people had already seen it through a lot. Although I think some of the performances were um, great. Um, I like Hootie and the Blowfish came back. That was the only one. They sang their two. Yeah, they sang their two classic hits, classic songs, which was fine to celebrate the I don't know thirty fifth anniversary or thirty, excuse me, thirtieth anniversary of the songs. Um, BTS came. They sang Boy with Love. Such a, I'm I'm really digging that song now. Really good choreography and things. Um, they had some of the contestants come back too. They had the girls, oh my God, Kim Cherry and Marnie sang a Lizzo song and they went right into like the guys coming back and doing My Prerogative by Bobby Brown. It was an R&B melody. Though. Yeah. First of all, I don't get why they had it. Big for the R&B melody. Oh, I was okay with I who mean, they... I shouldn't say that because there was some really good singers in there. That I was okay with who they picked all. for it, but they didn't bring back everyone. Yeah. They only really had two numbers, ain't it? There was three. What was the third? It was the edge of seventeen. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, two. Num- I call that two numbers. That's but I true. guess it That's was true. because it was two. The numbers. Lizzo turned right into my prerogative, it was and two then numbers, yeah, and then they had the Rock Girl singing "Edge of Seventeen by Stevie Nicks. That looked good on paper, but didn't quite pan out in execution. It was kind of weird they did it too. Like, okay, are we picking people from the top? 
No. Ten times. No, no, no. Because Rod didn't come back. I mean, he was part of a save. You couldn't bring him back. No, no. They. There's no room because he didn't put the R&B. Okay, no. Uh, Again, I say this with love. And I say this with criticism, but I say it with love as well. The voice does not care about their former contestants. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, let's, they picked the songs first. I can guarantee you. They yeah. said, you know what? Let's do my prerogative. Let's do an R.B. Finale. Yeah, let's do an R.B. Finale. And then, oh, we liked Kim Chelly. We have. Kim Cherry, we have to highlight her, but we can't highlight her just by herself because it would be too much country and people would get really mad. So, hey, let's bring Marnie back as a throwback to Adam because we're really, because Adam is really upset because he didn't have anybody back. So let's bring back his whole entire team to perform somewhere. Yeah, his whole entire team came back. Calvin yeah. was there. Yeah, all Barry, of them. Uh, uh, they all got their... Um, Calvin, Barbie, uh, LB, and yeah. Dominic. They all got their consolation. Yeah. Let's come back and perform. Mm -hmm. So they all did that. They performed. The girls did that. Guys did that. And they just picked the people to match the song and the people to like support Adam and complete Adam. I mean, that was the only the thought. I think that was the only thought into it. They weren't like, oh, we love so and so so much. Let's highlight that person. Let's do no, this was all about Adam or about some numbers during the show. We had to fill three numbers, so let's yeah, add them all in. I was surprised they didn't. I was surprised they didn't bring some people back. Well, this yeah, that edge of seventeen, which looked probably better on paper than it worked yeah. out. Exactly, that's what I said. Yeah, the way the girls were dressed, it was just weird. Yeah, Presley the hair, there, Betsy, and, um, and Presley Lisa, is so good. I liked her, and someone else. It just looked like what is going on? Here? Right, exactly. And again, oh, but the production numbers were big. Brought somebody back. I like when they have the finalists pick a couple people. Have them each do a song with the finalists. Yeah, each we don't one, need that. Pick someone you were close to the season do a song. I think that's better and it gives more. No, of a chance. we don't do that because I think there's been a little like, um, a little resentment, a little drama over the years about who to come back and who not to come back. Who gets invited to, back? Who doesn't finalists, get invited back? So they want to bring back. It's really up to the producers. Well, if I were in my final spot, I want to bring Souls of Souls about that one year where they had Megan and she brought one person back. <laughs> yeah, it's like, be happy you got somebody. So it was kind of funny. Yeah, though. like, why know. didn't she bring back DeAndre? Um, Reagan. She didn't make the finale, so. Oh, that's true, she did. So she, did. she brought no one back. Yeah, she, she brought back herself. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't. She, she good lord. Didn't. Yeah. Come so she what? Come back. She came back and sang with some girls. What did you think about that performance? Like the performances of the stars plus Blake sang. Um, all the all the coaches sang except for let's see, John sang. Oh, we had Taylor Swift. Show? Yeah, the the Tuesday finale show. I'm confused on Tuesday finale show. I don't think any. Of I'm confusing all said. the. I'm confusing the shows. Okay, we had Who in the Blowfish. We had the Dream right brothers. We had and Travis Tritt, Sarah McLaughlin. That was beautiful. And it sounded fantastic. Yeah, Angel. Angel. I love the but song. I want your angel again because I think it's yeah. like a commercial. <laughs> oh, with the dogs. It's, it's just like oh, yeah. So what a cry. Yeah. Buy a uh, dog, adopt a dog, actually contribute really, really to a dog. Good. It sounded good. I think it was going to. It sounded really, really good. The BTS yeah. essay. Um, yeah. Love. Taylor Swift and um, Brandon Urie. Yeah. Taylor sang with Brandon, which is also important, but at the um, Billboard Awards. No, who did Guy sing with? And we were just like, what is Guy going on? Guy the Blowfish. Yes. They came back and sang with Guy. And he was just like, oh, it's the biggest deal. And I'm like, dude, you are just... Like a little blimp in a thing. It's, that doesn't really mean that much. He was happy singing with him. Yeah, he was. I'm sure he rocked out to him as a kid. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Say, okay, Daxter sang with Toby Keith. Yeah, Toby Keith and Travis Tritt were there. Toby Keith had a song called That's Country, Bro. <laughs> <laughs> God, I love the title. <laughs> That's country, and, bro. And, that's and, the and, best. And it kind of reminded me of that song. That's country, bro. Oh, no, you know what that song is? And he's naming all these names. There's a song that came out like that. Okay, when the song. Oh yeah, he named. He was naming people. He goes, yeah. He goes, Loretta Lynn and so and so. Yeah, country, bro. There's oh my God. Like you know what I'm talking about? Vogue, Madonna, no, Brita Hayward, Sandy Bell. No, there's a song like that. War and Peaceful Lady T. I'm Nikki Giovanni, just no, to name that, a few. That's Tina Marie. That's an excellent song. No, but there was a song that came out, and it was what they name all these people. I don't know. They all these people there, but this song was like that. Mm -hmm. I have it in my head. Da, 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 no, I'll think of it. Anyway. Yeah, I'll think of it. 
And he was saying to people, so and so, so and so. That's country, bro. And at the end, he threw in Dexter's name. So that is some straight up country. That's country, bro. That's cute. It was actually, <laughs> it was so. Yeah. Ridiculous. But I'm glad they came. That it was cute. I like when those celebrities come and sing, come back and sing with yeah. the young and up and coming artists, especially when it's a big, a big country person. And then Travis Tripp. Yeah. Came. They've been waiting very much. They've been waiting a lot to have Travis come to the show. He came and sang with Andrew. We talked to Andrew, and Andrew was like losing it. Yeah. He's going to be singing with Travis Tripp. I'm so excited. That's her favorite country yeah. singer. Um, everyone gets the old school traditional country country. Yeah, good for them. And. Once again, Travis, um, Toby, yeah, who sang, to, I mean, Toby and Travis came to the show and they sang live. I'm missing my two. Yeah, Which do some people. My thing with the voice. Why can't you sing live? I don't get it. With the voice, they bring all these people on. And it, yeah. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Let's see. Songs. Taylor Swift, she was pre recorded. With Brandon. BTS was pre recorded. It's like you bring. Halsey, back. I believe she was there, right? And, um, live. Khaled was there live. Or Khalid, sorry. He was there live. But everybody's pre recorded. Jonas Brothers were live, but they were pre recorded. Yeah, so the okay, you keep saying live, <laughs> pre recorded. That's what they taper over the weekend. No. The shows or dance. I when I said live, live, when I said live, I mean Khalid. I mean, he was on this, he was in the studio physically on Monday and sang. That's what I meant. Okay. Or Tuesday. Okay, well, anyway. Um, <laughs> they. <laughs> you don't believe so me? So my thing is that they need to, and I understand it's because of schedules. They're trying to go. Right, scheduling, stars, right. They don't everybody else, too. But it's like when you go to the Grammys, everybody's there. Right. One's foaming it in or getting pre recorded or putting it in or penciling it in. And right. And I, I, I mean, I shouldn't say that because you. They, you well, understand why, though. And maybe that's another reason why they don't get the big thing and the ratings for the show. Monday show had more ratings than Tuesday show, and I yeah those people were like I just saw these people right Tuesday people did not I care. I saw people on the Billboard Awards and number two instead of watching the show I could just go on YouTube and watch right the clip. and find out who won which later, is, which is hard because I want the show to do good. Yeah, and, and the clips are going to be on Twitter stuff. later too. Yeah, I want them to be successful. I want people, but why are only the artists of country the only ones showing up and doing these things right. live? Okay, why do you think? But when you go to other shows, right. which we'll talk about later, uh, we see other shows, and and ninety percent out of the hundred artists are oh, they live? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about um, the voice. Well, anyway, I'm the big spoiler. Malin won. She um, was part of Team John. She's very excited about that. John was very happy to have his very first win. Yep. Um, John. And I guess yeah. he had a reason to. Yeah, they had a reason. He played off. And we're teasing him now because he always said he wanted the VGOT, which means the Voice Trophy, the Emmy, the Oscar, the Tony, and the Grammy. He's got all of them now. So his, his musical goals or whatever have been met or achieved, which I think was kind of cute. And... With the season 16 of The Voice not finally over, season 17 is getting ready to start in a few months in September as part of the fall programming thing, and we have a casting change. Oh, we're not going to talk Belinda. about who the second, third, or winner is up? Okay, okay, um, let's see. Guys was second, Dexter was third, Angie was fourth. Just as we predicted. Yeah, I was going to say, that's, that was totally predictable, and we all know. Okay. So, originally, we, it was announced on May 10th that the four coaches will be returning. Yes. To the show. Exactly. And the first thing we thought about, how can we change this? What can happen? What can go wrong? Because we've been saying on our podcast. For the longest time now. The longest time is that Adam Levine needs a break. Yeah. Because and... Or Adam Levine has checked out of the show. I said maybe he's thinking about pizza while he's there. Or what's going on, or what he's been doing, or he's writing the next song in his head, and he's not really as engaged with the voice and stuff as he should be, or as he's expected to be. Well, today it was announced. Today we're going to make our do our podcast. Yeah, to talk and about the season. To, to do our, we had to wait before we could do our podcast because we find out there's a change of plans. Adam Levine has left the Voice. Yes. 
uh, no press release, no, no big, nothing. yeah. Carson Just a Daly. tiny little blip. It's like they probably passed it to him right before they were getting ready to read it. And Carson Daly was one of the producers of the of the boy. Right, so of course he had to know. Um, it was good. He broke the news. Yeah. But he broke the news so casually. Yeah. Just like as we leave tonight, Adam Levine decides to leave the boy. Yeah. And we wish him the best. We're going to miss his bromance with Blake. We wish him Yeah. And, and here and comes Gwen. Who's replacing him on the show? Gwen Safani will be there. Yeah. All right, everybody. Bye. bye. Have a good weekend. See you Tuesday. It was just like they do on The Voice when you're waiting for them to say who's going to be. It was kind of funny. Who's going to win the save, and you're weighing down to the last two seconds. Yeah, because Ar- Carson's right. good at the last two minutes. And but it, Carson brings it up, and when I first heard about it, it was early in the morning. Right, after he said it. I actually thought it was a joke because right because you hadn't heard it anywhere nowhere. else. I'm like, should I start writing this up? Because I don't see it anywhere. It's like right. nowhere to be found. Is it the onion coming, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but Am Levine has decided to leave the voice. It was time for him to go. And it was. And it was. And right. I never thought we would see it happen. I didn't think so either. But I'm wondering if there's a teeny bit more into his leaving than it's been mentioned or it's been promised. There's I been a couple of so. reports and some things from... NBC sources that have been writing to other outlets that things haven't been pleasant. Oh, I especially in the last couple of episodes, and everything came to a head. Um, oh yeah. And these are all just reports, NBC sources, and things like that. So I can't really confirm them, or who knows? But we don't know. yeah, exactly. But supposedly there's gossip reports that during the pre-taped episode. They taped an episode on Mother's Day that was going to air that night, that Monday night, the 13th. And during that taping of the episode, which was the semifinal, correct? Adam didn't have a team member. He had no horse in his race or whatever. But he was very unhappy about the fact that he didn't have anybody in the semifinals. Didn't think, enough. yeah, didn't think that he had to go to work or had to show up because he wasn't there. Yeah, you got to still be there. Yeah, he still had to be there. And then right after that, they were flying out to New yeah, York that day. Show that Sunday because of the right. upfronts being announced on that Monday. Right. And for people who don't know, the upfronts are a big presentation for the advertisers, people who are going to be buying the time slots during the shows, where all the networks, they all do it on different days, all the networks announce what their programming is going to be for the season. That's kind of like when you find out if shows that are on the bubble are officially canceled because you don't see them on the schedule, or what the new shows are going to be. They bring the new talent out. They bring the successful talent out and things as well. And the voice coaches were flown out. It was an, um, announced that they were all going to be there. They were all returning for season 17. Um, John, Kelly, Blake, and Adam all came out and sang, did a duet, and whatever. And Adam supposedly was not as enthusiastic as all the rest of the people. There were journalists there. There were hundreds and hundreds of people there. I believe they were at Radio City Music Hall yeah, when they did theirs at. Yeah, tons know. of people there. And Adam was less than enthusiastic. He was very robotic and stoic. And the NBC brass, who were in charge of the show, did not like that he wasn't as enthusiastic. And it was in front of the advertisers who paid the shows and who paid the salaries. Belinda, what were your thoughts on that? My thoughts, I could see the truth in it. Yeah. I could totally see the truth in it. I mean, but one of the things I noticed is it's not just this season. But this no. This season, and those cross battles, we mentioned our They podcast. brought it to a head. He was so snappy with Blake. Right. Blake wanted to still a contestant. Right. In fact, he even went on TV uh, after one of, the, one of the shows. Yeah, did an interview. They asked him about. Yeah. About with Blake and you and Blake feud, he's like, no, we always get that way. Just that you're seeing it live, and normally it's edit. They're a little going back right. and forth at each other. But he kept calling him stupid, and he was saying yeah. just weird things that Adam was trying to steal. Blake was trying. To, he goes, "You gave her away. You gave right. her away." And he goes, "Yeah, I'm trying to steal her back." And right. Like, it seemed a little more like snarky, a little more. Um, yeah. Time. And then he talked about, "Oh, I hated it. I hate it the format." Obvious that the format changed. None of us liked it. You weren't right. alone. Oh. And as a coach, he wasn't alone. I'm sure Kelly and John didn't like it either. Right. Blake had to like it because he had eight contestants in the in the competition. Yeah. But for a coach like Kelly and a coach like John, 
Um, it would be a little frustrating. Right. It is frustrating. Matches. Right. You're not, you're not automatically getting four people. Yeah. You're going to get whoever gets voted in by America. Right. But and you take it in stride. And I'm sure the way that the voice, like, listens to things and talks and listens to feedback from the fans. The fans are pretty, very interactive. Then I'm sure that there are going to be some changes and adjustments made to it in this upcoming season. Yeah, you have but been. Um, the fact that Adam was very vocal, yeah. very obvious about not liking it. Um, he even said in an interview that he thought it sucked. I hated it. The whole nine yards. And I'm like, and especially, that's not necessarily the kind of language you should be using when you're on the show, number one. Number two, you're being paid $26 million a year. That was a rumor. He's getting yeah, 13, it's a rumor. Um, right. 13, 13 Yeah, $13 million a season. For the amount of work that you do, it's like, come on. Yeah. You can be a little bit more enthusiastic about that. And, and if he did like it, he could say, I'm not fond of it. So, right. So and so. And I hope that I it's changed. Yeah. We can re change it and re talk about it, whatever else, too. Right. Moving forward. But last season, there was no format change. Right. It was the same. And he had four contestants right. in the finale. Right. They all had four, right. four contestants go to the top 13. Right. He lost two right off the bat. Then he right. had two contestants. Right. When he got to semi round, he threw one under the bus. As usual. One. And I That's still, him. to this day, when I see pictures, it, it annoyed me. We talked about our podcast. Oh, big I don't time. care what who you were as a coach. If that happened, I'm annoyed. Yeah, and I'm gonna say that. It. That was yeah. his last straw for me. And I was in a annoyed. Sense. That just right. that was just it, it wasn't the so, first time he's done that. Yeah, so he rude. Was so rude and so inconsiderate. And as we had talked on our podcast, he had a chance to make it right. He yeah, came to correct back it and didn't. And could have said it. Kelly right. tried to defend it. Right. And Jennifer, everybody tried to defend. And then he was kind of like, no, you know. Yeah, that's just was his personality. Then he comes back the next week. Oh, I talked to DeAndre. It's all good. And then we get DeAndre's mother. Yeah, and right say, now. oh, it ain't all good. They talk. Right. What are you talking about? Exactly. You know, it was just like you handled it wrong. You threw both of them under the bus. He handled Not everything DeAndre, wrong. But you threw the girl Reagan on the bus. There's still people, people were going off on her on. Oh the yeah. Like, still. You're going after a 15 year old child who had no control over that. You know. Right. He so Adam he lost the faith in the audience with his team, and then I just feel like there had to be a little bit more. The feeling is mutual. There are rumors that they wanted him fired. They didn't. You know, they didn't like him. talking about the NBC brass, and these are just rumors. They wanted him fired. They didn't think he'd be around. But I'm just thinking, who can go on? Who can be a representative of your job and say those kind of comments and act that way at a big public event, you know, and still keep your job? Or who? It's like going to your, you going to your grandma's house, and then you gonna clown and act a fool. You know you're going to get a whipping when you get home. You know you're going to be, if you're a little kid or something like that, for acting out or oh, showing yeah. out. Oh, oh yeah. But there's no way. Oh, yeah. Well, these kids would get a whipping. I grab this house and get out. Yeah. You ain't going to be clowning up I in here. Take your shoes off and sit down on my plastic furniture and shut up. <laughs> and eat this <laughs> ice cream if you don't want it. Yeah. And if you don't want it, then you can starve. Exactly. No right. Exactly. And you sat there on the plastic couch. You, you sure did. Plastic cover. You did. Sat there, took your shoes off, and you ate. Uh -huh. Or you starved. No problem. Exactly. Which I think, and that was just a little bit like there had to be a little bit of that. Yeah. For him. Because Goodbye. Bye bye. Gone. They would put his picture up on social media, and people would be like, "I'm still mad about last year. I'm still yeah. mad about last year." And I was one who was still mad about last year. To yeah. The and then when it got, to I will. Th that will always be a sore spot for me. Where he had no matter what on the show. That none of them went further, and it, it to the point where they were voting against the coach. Yeah, exactly. Because they had some, vote they had because some you hate Adam. Who had some great performances? Yeah, that out saying some people, and they, they, they still lost. People, and they still lost. It got to the point where he had no one. Th that guy, he finally had two contestants to save. Yeah, and they both got sent home. And I was all right with that. And he was like, "Wow, as a criminal. yeah, exactly, like really." Wow. And it happened last time, but he didn't have. And then, then, then before that, right, with the year with Bryn Cartelli won, which is three seasons ago, he had known the finale as well. Bye. And that was before um, Levine Gate. Yeah. Um, it was a Fort Levine game. So it sounded like he had just checked out. There was a time back when 
when we started covering The Voice, and we right. covered The Voice for years, right. there was a finale where he had three contestants. Right. And they were all good. The That's finale. the sad part is that. A comeback series, and they got a third person in. They were yeah. going against Blake. He ended up losing. Yeah. He sang with each one. He had songs picked out. Yeah. He was telling them this and that. You right. can get a record deal. You can get a record I'm going to help you. Yeah. But then I'm over the years, even part, of, even part of the crew, when we're backstage watching the yeah. show. Even the crew. Yeah. Talking about how Adam's checked out. Adam doesn't care anymore. We won't say any names. No. We won't say any names at all. Oh, my God. We won't say any names. But. but even their reaction. Yeah. When he he picks songs for people, and he'd be like, oh. Adam didn't even practice. He does the same thing with yeah. the same people every year. Um, it's one of those things. He doesn't really care. He doesn't really think about the contestants. And I don't know if that's necessarily true. So when you hear that, you're like, yeah. oh, here's what people saying backstage. Yeah. Then again, like I said, uh, we've been coming to Voice for a long time. And, and it was he, not always that way. There's been, see, he used to do interviews. And he, I shouldn't say he, like, they, because um, we don't see many of the coaches do do a lot of interviews now besides um, towards the end. Um, so I can't say that's right. bad on But he would be like, oh, here we go. Hey, yeah. Hey, guys. Uh-huh. So I'm ready. You know, Excited, enthusiastic, you know? but I don't know. he got to the point where he just was like, oh, here we go again. Right. Then he even made the comment, oh, there's less and less people coming. And I'm you like, know? well, yeah, because you don't say anything. You don't say anything for me to come here at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I got work to do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Whatever. But it got to the point where then he was just like, no personal questions. Don't ask any personal questions. Ask any personal questions. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. He was just. I don't know. And I don't know. It's bad because what I think they should have done was he should have taken a some uh, season off before the, before now. Oh yeah, he should not have been Maybe on. He should not have been Jordan on season won. sixteen at all. Yeah, at the Jordan one, that then was take your nine. break. Season ten, he would have been already been signed up. Like, yeah, two. It's hard with the yeah season. the two years at a time. With this season, they were already taping it before the whole Levine Gate started. Yeah, they because had I think already taped. They're promoting them by season. Like yeah, they had already taped the beginning. Like September so, starts. One, it starts in yeah. September, then it starts to get in February. That's like one cycle, so probably. You, yeah, so in that spring one is a little tricky because by the time we saw LB and Dominic and Calvin and um, Marcy. People from Adam's already, team. That was before. They had already picked, picked him on the blind auditions, before. yeah. So this would have been the first season. That he would have had to start off. Would he have gotten with everybody team? knowing everybody the, what happened knowing what and happened. feeling like, well, I'm not that picking him as a coach, I right? Maybe season ten he would have came. But by the time they got to season eleven, he should have took the season off. And we yeah, what well, he should have about taking a season off, which, which um, I thought was common knowledge when I found out the, the other day. But yeah, not much com- that common knowledge. Yeah, yeah. thinking about about leaving the season off. And right, Ryan Tedder was going to take his place. Right. From Rome Republic, right? And then Adam changed his mind, so Ryan Tedder didn't do it. But then that's how he ended up getting involved in Songland, mm-hmm. and it probably would have worked out better because he should have took the season off. Yeah, you never know. Like, like, like Christina, Perry, yeah, Christina, and you know, um, Jennifer and all them do. Right. And he probably would have came back so fresh, yeah, and hungry and ready. Exactly. And he would have got by the time he got Al- Addison in the finale. At, you know, at season right you know, or. When Chris Blue was there, you know, maybe he would have got someone in the finale. Right. Maybe he would have had that time off because it's a lot when you're, I mean, when you're doing the show twice a year. Oh, and then the show's on twice a year, and then you do a tour. Well, we just, yeah, him personally. They remember Room Five tours a lot. They do a tour. A tons of touring in between or something like that. And he, so maybe he needs to step back. He was a workaholic. He kids. Yeah. So that's oh, and then too. I should mention too. He just he lost his good friend and manager. Yeah, that had I'm sure that had an effect on him. I have to think about that. You know what? Yeah, you got a point. We yeah, say a lot of not so nice things about. Adam yeah, Levine. but not about Adam being the person. Right. We're only talking about Adam Levine being coaching style. The the, the a hole sometimes. The yeah, voice. the way he acts on the voice, right. not the way he acts outside or whatever. Right. You know, a lot of this, a lot of this behavior could be him grieving his friends. And another thing too, his manager. Yeah, his manager, um, Jordan Feinstein. Um, did pass away, and that could have had something with his change in, in his later, attitude, right? Later years, right? The earlier years, his attitude or anything, because right? Jordan was one. They had got an NBC deal. That's right. Longland came up, and everything. Right. Else. And Jordan was the Maroon Five manager, and he's the brother of Jonah Hill. 
Right. Seen and Beanie Feinstein. Yeah, and little Beanie Feinstein, who's uh, who's doing well in Booksmart. Doing well in Booksmart. Good for you. Little sister. And, and we used to see Bird. Jordan a lot, a lot of events and everything. He was a, a big right. guy. And I know Adam has taken over the company. Right, right. The side part and trying to keep it going, and some artists have shifted around too. And that could have some. Yeah, that could have that could be well. a factor. And that could be a factor, but yeah, but it's not. An excuse. But unfortunately, you still got to come to work. Yeah. Now, we've all been to work. And yeah. Really nobody wants to work on Mother's Day. Day. Yeah. You have to come to work and you can't, you know, like you only have so much time off in the real world. And yeah. That's it, you know, we only got so much time. We have to come back to work and yeah. you're dealing with the tragedy. Yeah. And everybody else and you have to do your job. Yeah. You might hate it. There's tons of things. And you oh, know, yeah. Sucks, but you're not going to walk in and tell the big boss. Yeah. I'm not going to sit there at the big company picnic and be like, oh my God, this sucks. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna eat your company food and yeah, bonus and leave. And hope you can talk about it later. Talk about it later, you know. Right. But, so that's it. So that was yeah. big breaking news. That was. Um, and so now we have Gwen. It's gonna be Gwen and Kelly, and Blake and John. Yeah, and I know you love Gwen. I do. Gwen's my girl. Be nice. I love, I love her. Gwen too. I know you do. That's why you were saying. I'm just concerned. I can see a big butt coming. Yeah, you're right. You are just see butt coming. I'm concerned now how, okay, I like the focus beyond the coaches. I mean, right. On the contestants. On the contestants. And that never and happens you know anyway. It's not going to happen. It's going to be focused on right. the coaches, coaches, coaches. Right, right, right. And they play up this game with Blake and what's it called? I hope it doesn't become this lovebird gang and all oh, you guys don't start fighting. It's going to be. Put her on the far chair. The with Mr. Adam. and Mrs. Smith put thing. Put Blake there. We yeah, put her in Adam's chair. I don't need it. I need to see her fighting her boo for Kate. Okay. Gwen, one thing, she never liked, she couldn't fight against Pharrell. Yeah. Pharrell, if she's going to fight against Blake. And she was like, oh, Pharrell. She used to they were, at that point, they weren't dating, so she was fighting right. against Blake. Right. But Pharrell was the one she just couldn't. Every time she I miss Pharrell. Her, and then every time she picked with I'm not going to lie. I miss Pharrell. Around, I want him she, back. Then when she came back the second time, she turned around. Sorry, John. Around. Sorry, Kelly. It would be so great if and Pharrell was Kelly. back. But does Pharrell want to come back? Because no. Pharrell was a great coach. I love Pharrell. And then the, the, when, was it two seasons, Pharrell? By the yeah. second season, I think he was done. He just kind of... Yeah, to- I think he was frustrated by not... By having artists and nurture them and stuff. And then the company... The recording company not behind it. That was another thing, too. Yeah, Adam was that frustrated was about that, too. Adam and Blake, they've all yeah. so... Um, and, but Blake did it a better way. He's like, Republic, we proved the guy. Yeah, here's his sales, here's this. Prove that he can get a record. Sign It's him. up to you. Now yeah. To promote, and they, right, right, and, right. And they hadn't promote them. However, on two good notes, Will Republic Records put the note. Bryn Cartelli is the first winner who went off to Atlantic Records. I know Kelly got her. Oh, you know Kelly got that deal. Label. Yeah. And... Chevelle's left to be seen. Right. However, Chloe Kohansky has a single coming. Yes, out. Chloe. And, Good for her. Um, she has a single. And it's supposed to be an out. album later or an EP later. Something. It's some initials or something. Chloe MK or Chloe. Like K- I don't know. About that. But anyway. And, uh, Kohansky's a bit I much, I guess. I don't that know. She was going to be gone somewhere. And we never going to see her again because it had been such a long time. And it had been almost right. over a year. It's just like you have and to have songs ready to go. You're not really seeing. Right. And all that. And it's coming out. And it's on Republic Records. So I was like, whoa. Oh yeah, God. good for her. So I hope they promote it. I really hope they stand by it. It might be a little bit different now because I know there's been a couple changes over at Republic Records. Yeah. You know, the Universal. There, that's true. Maybe Universal's running it more. Maybe we don't really know. So right. It's gonna be interesting and see. I don't know if this is true, but I feel like American Idol coming back has lit a fire under them. Yeah, they need it. They, yeah. They're thinking more about it, what they're going to do. Do you see the way Hollywood Records and the way ABC and the way Idol promotes their artists? Like... I don't know. Is Mayla, is she going to do the Today Show? Is she going to be anywhere? Is she going on Jimmy Fallon? Do we know anything about her promotional journeys? I feel like I know everything on Idol. Lane Hardy won American Idol, yeah. and he's doing a lot of he's things. He's already been on Two Coasts. Yeah, he's already been on Two Coasts. Yeah, Mayla's left Universe a lot. We don't <laughs> yeah, he's going to be at the ABC Upfront presentation. Yeah. They, I mean, not Upfront. Their FYC Emmy presentation that they have, he's going to be a part of that. Um, they mentioned a couple of things he was going to do and get, and so, I don't know. I hope so. And his single's doing well. It's behind Malin's. It's behind Malin's, so yeah. Malin's, they got the hit. I mean, they got the song. They right. Her cover. They have the potential. They have. She has the Let's potential. use it. She has the potential to do what some of the other winners couldn't do. I, I think, think so, too. Couldn't do. 
wasn't allowed to do. Yeah. Really couldn't. Do didn't that. get the opportunity to do that. She might get to do. I mean, she might be able to um, hit the pop chart. Yeah, I hope so. The adult Hopefully contemporary the chart. The record label won't think she's too old. You know, has been rumored before. Or they may not think she's too too you know, old. Country. She's only twenty four. No, but I'm saying past winners. Oh they yes. They might not think she's too R and B. You know, so she right, might right. be able to. You know, or, she, I think she can probably sing yeah. any genre and be successful and get away with yeah, it. Bryn will never know because no, she didn't. She went straight to Universal. But it'll be curious to see how they will handle this winner. You know? Right. When I want to ask. I always want to ask when we see people with public record. Can I talk to you for a second? Or yeah. Can you yeah, when you see somebody from the record you company, you're like, ask, oh, can you come ask here? Ask about the boys. I got a question. You know, I, yeah. yeah I, I, well, I'm going to ask one day. Whatever. Yeah. Since... Since I used to intern for a couple of guys that were that are in running Republic right now. Anyway, but um, hey, hey, never me. It used to be your intern. Yeah, let's talk let's about talk. this. Yeah. So um, you're funny. It's just kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't want to go there, but you kind of don't yeah. want to go well, there. Well, yeah. the I for one, I'm excited about this season 17 change because at least it'll yeah. be a little bit something. It'll be a little bit different, and I don't know. And, and we'll I'm sure. What so what do you think they should do change it? A okay, if we had did this podcast yesterday, which we were going to do right. the podcast yesterday and we end up getting delayed for some right. reasons like we knew. Yeah, exactly. I would have said they need to switch out the coaches because the same four, Kelly. Yeah, you said that. Year, yes. Kelly can John is second yes. year, Blake in seventeen years. I would have said they need to switch out Am Levine. Yeah. I think that yeah, I would have said that now too. Now that's happened. You're right. I also so I think, think that's already gonna be a fresher panel. Right. Because I think they're going to be fresh. Because right. they're ready to go. John, woo off a win. Yeah. woo And then um, Gwen has been dying to get back on the show. Yeah. She's been talking about every right. interview when they ask her. I think they should get, ri- get rid of the comeback stage. It's got to go. It has to go. I don't think it should be fun. I think it was okay with Kelsey Ballerini. It was better with BB, but it still needs to go. It needs to go. And you They're can... Being nice. Okay, I am being it nice. It needs to go. Um, but I think you should just... Um, okay, get rid of change it. wild cards back. If you must yes, do if it, if you must do it, and get rid of that block, that block, and have BB really for me. The oh, I like the block. A big ego fest with the coaches. We don't need the block. I like the block. I'm on the show. I'm trying out. You know, I got my song ready. You know, I'm ready to go. I already know I'm not picking Adam. I'm ready, ready, ready. <laughs> I'm ready to go now. I got it. Like, now oh. I'm got. Oh my God, who I pick? Do I pick John or do I pick Blake? Yeah. I'm thinking, who's going to help me later? Right. Who's going to do whatever else, too? Right. I got to think. I may not win, but let me think. And I don't want someone blocking me, but they hear my first note because they don't want another coach to get me. Okay, but at the same time. around, get me. Yeah, but at the same time. I got to get one. Their team. (laughs) I gotta you're gonna be, be, to you're gonna be begging for the comeback stage after gonna, that, right? You're laughing. like, baby, come get me. And that's only two. And then looking at who people they're trying out, are we gonna get more country singers? Because Blake is on a roll. Yeah. With the country. Are we gonna get rappers popping up now? Because no. Kim Cherry thing. We're not getting are any we rappers. Gonna get, yeah. We're getting R and B, and I hate to say it, but it's gonna pretty much stay the same it way. Might help Gwen too without having Adam. Yeah, you're gonna get all those pop people. Yeah, that, that Adam would probably Adam be lobbying for. Out, cause all right, those guys that they like, you know, they, they used to like Maroon Five. They rocked yeah. out through five in high school. Well, you know. I feel sorry for the Falsetto boys. What they lost it? their Adam. They, they lost, lost their coach. Well, John, Nicky, thing. Oh yeah, John. I don't know, and I just Can't think we the, get Usher back. Oh See, no, I want Pharrell. Like Usher. Sorry, Usher. Yeah, it must have been though too. That's why I think I want Pharrell. That's why I think it was a little bit too. Cause if they could have got any of those coaches back. Been on their schedule, but all of a sudden, it seemed like it seemed like everything was set, everything was all happy on May 10th. And yeah, this all this all happened May within 11th. the last two weeks. Something happened between May 10th and May within the 10 days, which wasn't enough time for them to get someone to change That's all their true. plans around. To change all their plans around. Right. What's Jay Hud doing? What's Jay Hud's you know, probably overseas? Alicia Keys. Well, Christina said she's not coming back. Alicia Keys, she lives in New York. She Alicia probably didn't want to come back. Probably didn't want to come back. CeeLo, they won't bring back. Yeah, no. Um, Pharrell probably doesn't want to come back. Oh, I love it. Think I want Pharrell it. back. I'm Pharrell not going to lie. Come back. Shakira. 
Shakira's and she assistant. She yeah, and she's out of the that. country. She was out of the country. Usher would have been their next yeah. bet. You know what would have been and nice? Promote his new movie coming up while he's there. Could have put out a new song. They always promote the coach. Yeah, but you know what would have been nice? They did no coach do it. And year. they were never going to do it. Well, yeah, you know why? They get the upfront. But think about it, they didn't do one. Yeah, I mean, and you know why? Not the star, but Kelly sang her song. Blue yep, Blue. her ugly yeah, dolls. He sang this season, did he? He sang with his co- his. No. Mm-mm. John, I think John sang. John sang twice, I think. But it would have been nice to have one of those coaches from um, La, Va- La Vaz. I don't know how to say it. The voice. Oh, they put the Telemundo Spanish version. In the commercial. You're right. Where it would have been. Garden? Yes, girl. Alejandro Sanz. Alejandro Sanz. What was the or movie? somebody from the yeah. way. Yeah. It would have been nice. Stuff all up, get Ricky Barton on the panel. Ooh, girl. That would have shook things all up. That would have made me happy. It's on one of those voices. And Ricky Martin's one of my favorites. That would have shook things all oh, up. Oh, yeah. Everybody would have been scared. Yeah, and it's not that... Let's get Keith Urban back. Well, they want to come. No. Back. Not that I don't like Gwen. Not that I don't like her, but it would have been nice to have a new member, a new addition to the voice family come back in and change it up and not a return. Oh, yeah, I know. would have put out... We're looking for somebody. You would have got somebody. Oh, yeah. You Ryan's sitting really up there waiting. Will I am? Tanner would have jumped up there. I yeah. To run this summer. But he was supposed to be the person. They probably. Yeah. I bet they probably went to him first and he probably just couldn't do it. Yeah. Your date's that point. might be interesting. And he would have had to change some stuff around. But they mm. don't work that much. Well, I don't yeah. know. I should say they work that much. But so anyway, there goes season. That, that's what I think. 16. Start I'd agree with that. I don't think they still have to go to just have them all start with three members. And four members, and then let them bu- be booted or their way out. Or someone has suggested that maybe he's trying to get forty-eight. Just spend a lot more time nurturing and getting it down to like thirty good people. You're right because they lost a bunch of Tuesday shows. Yeah, I don't like the losing. They lost a bunch of Monday shows. Well, I don't like losing don't like eight people at once. Shows. They lost them all. Or they had put Ellen on or something. Oh, and because the Tuesday ratings have been abysmal. That's fine, but it gave you not enough chance to get to know these people. Right, I know, but they don't I care mean, about you that. You remember their audition, or if they got montaged at one point. Yep. You don't know anything about these people, so yep. you really had to focus on the very first Yeah, episodes. it's like the Miss America pageant. When they do the whole thing, they introduce yeah. everybody, yeah. then you go to the top ten, you go, okay, well, there's California, New York, Florida, Texas, and so who else is going to be there? Yeah, they did. Oklahoma, because, maybe, I don't know. I mean, I still think they did make the show once a year, but... Once a year would be nice. That's all we're looking for. I, I enjoy the show. I love to watch. I, I, I mean, I watch it all the way through. I like to watch it through the auditions. And not me. I like to get through them. I like the auditions, but then... You I didn't like the comeback stage. With yeah. Them. I know they do it in other countries. I didn't like it. And right. I thought they took away... And and what I didn't like it. There was so much good talent, right? That disappeared. Yeah. And not to say they get the third team. There was so many people that I had a lot for the finale. That yeah. Didn't make the top. Yeah. yeah. Twenty. It's like, huh? What? You know? Huh? I don't know. I don't well, know. We're with, with well with this change, we're hopeful. We're very hopeful that things will be a little different or a little bit better. And maybe there'll be some excitement back to the show. The show needs a shake-up. It well, needed a shake-up. This is a shake-up. And this is the shake-up that it needed. And I hope Malin will get some publicity yeah. in the next, year, next couple of days because now this has overshadowed it. Right, exactly. Luckily, this happened after she won. Was yeah. Because she's a very, very nice girl. Right. I really like her voice. She was very excited. I I called it. I yeah. watched that first episode. Yeah. A lot of people didn't call it. That's funny because... It was not on a lot of people's radar. And I right. don't know why. It was it because okay. I it's because of the t- it's because of Blake's dominant thing. Well, she that's came why. Out the gold. Oh, that's true. It came out really great. A song from the eighties. I called the first week. <laughs> maybe that was maybe that was why people didn't sleep on it. Song from the eighties. I said at first you could go. You're back and hilarious. Play our I, we even yes. About Someone go back and play our podcast. Their chances to win, and, and you can said, find it on iTunes. I said Blake's only chance to win was Skype, and you said Skype, and you were Dexter. Yep. There we go. We Who named him. John's chance to win. I the only chance to win would be Malin. And I agreed. Kelly's chance to win was Jed. Yeah, and, and Jed was gone. Adam's chance to win, we said, was Dominic. And he and didn't really have a chance. So Dominic didn't even make it until the battle. Yeah, because he had the Adam disease. Yeah. He, he was part of, like, the Reagan gate. Yep, him and Calvin. Yeah. But we'll see Calvin soon when we go to <laughs> That would be great. I will be going to IHOP. Anyway, not there. Yeah. So that's our voice season. Um, 
you can find me on Twitter at Phyllis underscore Thomas. Belinda, where can people find you? You can find me talking about Levine Gate. Oh, yeah. Adam is gone. Will this overshadow the show? Will the show get better? Will the show get Will better? Will we ever see Maitland again? Is this really a real phone number? It's really a real phone number. Are you going to call me like you said you would? I don't know. I hope she makes it. Yeah. Anyway, at Belinda's LA Music. Okay, Belinda's LA Music. want to thank everybody for listening. Thank Ben Sound for the lovely theme song that we are about to play on the way out. And we will be seeing you guys very soon. You'll be back talking about The Voice in the fall, but you can listen to our other podcast where we talk about other shows throughout yeah. the summer. Right? We talk about our talents, so you can dance. Yeah, so you think you can Songland. dance is premiering on the 3rd of June. Songland's premiering next week. Um, AGT's yeah, premiering some next week as well, so you'll be hearing a lot more from us. Talk to you guys soon. Goodbye. Bye.